Hey there, welcome back. In case we haven't met yet, my name is B, and I love to code the heck out of Squarespace and teach other designers how to do it too. Today is day 11 of the 12 days of Christmas, a video series where I've been sharing with you one new Squarespace customization every single day until tomorrow. For today's tutorial, I want to share with you a very specific CSS trick that can come in really handy if you're facing this type of situation in your client side. So if you have an auto layout in there that has been set to the list simple design, and then you have five slides or three slides, you have an uneven number of slides and you want the bottom ones to be centered, that can be a little bit difficult to achieve with the native options. So in this particular case, I'm gonna show you how you can deal with this when you have three slides at the top and you have two at the bottom and you want those last two to be right in the middle of the previous three. So if this is something that you're looking to fix at the moment, or if it's something that you'd like to learn how to handle in the future, make sure to keep on watching. All right, so here I am on a 7.1 side and I have my auto layout set to the simple list one. And you can see how I have five slides here. I have three at the top and I have two at the bottom. And the two at the bottom are actually centered with the ones that we have here at the top. And then if I shrink down my screen, you can see how everything after a certain point, it just snaps back into the native layout that Squarespace creates for tablets. And then all the way down to mobile, we have everything looking great. So this is what we're going to be achieving today. We're going to be laying down these two slides in the middle of the top ones when we have an uneven number of slides in an auto layout. So let's go ahead and jump right into our editor to be able to make this happen. So here I have the native look that we get if we have five slides in here. So I'm just gonna show you really quickly the settings that I'm working with in the auto layout. So inside this section, I just have like all of these turned on. It just doesn't really affect what we're going to be doing here. I just have a couple of slides. I have five slides to be precise. And then here for the design, I'm using the simple list. I have just a couple of things here in place. I have a maximum number of columns here set to three and then the rest doesn't really matter. So what we need to do here first is basically see how Squarespace has created this grid for us so that we know what we can do to be able to edit it. So if we take a closer look here, I'm just going to expand this out. If we take a look here and then we start diving into the code of this section, let's go ahead and take this from the top. So here we have the whole page section. So this is just grabbing the whole content in here. And then if we open this up, we can see that we have the section border, which is carrying the background that right now isn't anything, but this is carrying the background. And then we have the content wrapper. Within the content wrapper, we have a very generic container here that's called content. And then here we have a user items list, which is pretty much the start of the auto layout. And then within this section, we have a couple of things. We have the title here at the top that I'm showing it. And then in here, we have the UL element, which is what Squarespace uses in here to be able to set all of the slides in here. So if we open this up and scroll a little bit down, we can see how each of the slides or the items that we have in here is an LI element. But right now what we're interested in is the UL element itself because this one is the one that is creating the grid for us. And we can know that because here at the very bottom of that UL element, we can see that there's a little label that says grid. So what that means is that CSS grid has been applied to this container and this is the element that is organizing those slides in there for us. So if we want to make a change to how those slides are laid out, this is the container that we need to modify. So if we take a look here on the right side, we're going to see that there is a little snippet in here that is setting the grid template columns to repeat 31FR. So what this is doing is creating the columns inside the grid and is creating a repeat of three columns and each of them is meant to be one FR in width. One FR means one fraction of the space. So this is pretty much creating three equally wide columns. Now, the problem with grid is that it's a lot more rigid than Flexbox. So we can't just use something like justify content or align items or something like that to be able to push these two items to the middle of the top ones. We need to specify where we want to have these items inside the grid. So what we can do here is do a little bit of a math trick. We can increase the number of columns that we have in here so that we can basically place these items half of a column here and half of a column here so that they occupy the same space that they're doing right now, but in a different position in the grid. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the number of columns from three to six. 
we're going to expand each of these items to columns so that we can still have the same width for them. And then we're going to be able to place this slide that we have in here, starting not from the first column, but from the second one so that it sits here. And then we have a little bit of a space. And then this one is going to go from here to here. So let's go ahead and break all of this down inside CSS. Let's go ahead and start by modifying the number of columns that we have in here. I'm going to go here and then I'm going to be using the same property grid template columns. And I'm going to set this to repeat six one FR because I want to double the number of columns that we have in there so that we can use sort of half a column, which is not really going to be half a column, but we can see it that way. Now, in order to target this specific container, we could reuse the little snippet that Squarespace is using in here, this user items list simple data num columns three, because this one is the one that is already carrying that particular property. Now, I'm going to be using the black part and not the gray part. The gray out part refers to other elements or other things that we have on the website or that may be on the website because they are not necessarily there, but other things that are styled the same way that are not the thing that I'm standing on. And because I only want to modify the thing that I'm standing on or the type of thing in this case, then what I'm going to do is only use the black part, which again corresponds to what I'm looking at or I'm highlighting here on the screen. So I'm going to grab this part here of the selector. And then another thing that I want to do is I actually want to keep this layout on desktop. I don't really want to modify the layout that Squarespace creates automatically for tablets and for mobile, because if I take a look here and start shrinking things down, once everything goes down into like two slides here per row, I feel like this looks pretty good. I don't really mind having just one slide down here. So what I want to do is also include the media query that Squarespace is using. I'm actually going to reduce this for a second. All right, so here you can see that all of this snippet, again, only the part that I'm using is gonna be this one, but the whole snippet is inside a media query that goes from a minimum width of 768 pixels, and then a different value gets applied. I don't really care which one it is because I'm not going to modify that. I only want to modify things at this point onwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse that exact same breakpoint to only modify things on desktop. So I'm going to add that in here and I'm going to wrap my code with it. Now, another thing to consider here is that if you don't want this change to apply, like what we're going to do, if you don't want this modification to apply to all auto layouts that have the specific number of columns that you're targeting, you may want to include a data section ID in this selector as well. All right, so now let's go ahead and actually make the change here. So grid template columns. And I'm going to set this to repeat six, one FR. Now, right now, nothing is really going to happen because when you're using the repeat function within the custom CSS window, we need to add a couple of extra things around this value so that the browser can interpret it correctly. So let's go ahead and add the little squiggly line here. And then I'm just simply going to wrap the whole value in between quotes. And once I do that, you can see how now things changed on the screen. So what's happening at the moment is that all of the slides that we have in here sort of rearrange themselves to be able to fit the new six grid layout that we created in here. So if I take a look here inside the grid, you can see how now we have one, two, three, four, five, and then here is a sixth empty column. So we have effectively changed the number of columns that we have for the grid. Now, the problem is that we don't really want these list items to be this narrow, or at least I don't want this to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to target the different items that we have in here, the different slides, and then we're going to tell our browser to expand them to two columns each so that they continue to have the same width that they had before. So let's go ahead and target all of the slides. And we're going to do that by using a common class that all of these LI items have. So all of them are the different slides or items that we have here. So let's just go ahead and target them through list item. I'm going to do that in here, but I don't want to use this particular class on its own because list item is a common class that all auto layouts use. So I would be modifying other auto layouts as well. I just want to modify this one that has three columns in my case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse this snippet as well in this selector. And so now I'm going to target only the list items that are sitting within 
auto layouts simple list that have three columns so a lot more specific and now the way that we're going to expand these is by using here grid column so we're going to tell the browser how many columns we want these items to occupy and we're going to set this to span two and once we do that we can see how now the items are a lot thicker and so if I go back into the inspect element tool, we can see how the grid has not changed. We still have six columns. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. You can see them here. But now each of these items expand two of those columns. So we have here one and two, three and four, five and six. And now that we have this in place, you can see how we have enough space to be able to move this one column over so that it sits in the middle of this column and this column. And therefore, this second item is going to sit on this column and this column. So to be able to push this one one over, what we need to do is target this specific one. So in my case, that would be the fourth slide, depending on how many columns you're working with, your number may be different. But in this situation, if you're working with a three grid layout that we now turn to six, then this is going to be your fourth slide. So we're going to target the fourth slide in here based on precisely that, its position. Because if we take a look here, once again, inside the inspect element tool, all of the LI items share the exact same information. So we can't really target them by anything specific that we have inside the HTML, except where they're located. So this would be the first list item, the second one, the third one, and this is the fourth one. So we're going to target the fourth one with the nth child four to be able to change the position of this one, where it starts and where it ends. So let's do that in here. And once again, we're doing all of this within the media query because I don't want to affect any other device. So let's go ahead and write our little selector here. So I'm going to reuse the one that we used before because I still want to target a list item within a simple list auto layout that has a number of columns of three but I don't want to target all of them. I want to target the fourth one. So I'm going to include in here nth child four. And now I'm targeting the fourth list item there. And we can check this really quickly if we were to change like here, the background color, you can see how only that one changes to red. So we know that we're targeting the right one. And now it's just a matter of telling the browser where we want this slide to start and to end. So I don't want it to start on the first column, I want it to start on the second column. And I don't want it to end on the third column, I want it to end on the fourth column. So I'm going to go ahead and set up grid column again, but only for this slide, and I'm going to set it to go from the second column to the fourth column. Now, the problem here is that once again, we need to escape these values here so that the browser translates them correctly. So let's go ahead and add our little squiggly line there. And then we're going to wrap the whole value inside quotes. And just like that, you can see how now this slide starts from the second column and goes all the way to the fourth column. And then this one got pushed over. So this one is also aligned with the center of these two slides up here. Now, if we take one more look here at the grid, you're going to see how, again, the grid has not changed. What we changed was the position of these items within the grid. So here, if I stand over my grid, I have one, two, three, four, five, six columns. And then down here, you can see how we have the first one, which is empty, the second one, which starts grabbing like this part of the slide and goes all the way out to this third one here. And then we have the fourth one, let me move this over. We have here four, five, and six. And so this one just goes from number four to number five. And because we're using a media query for all of this, then what's gonna happen is that if we start shrinking down our screen, everything is going to stay the same way until that breakpoint of 768. And then when that hits, we're going to see everything stacking here. So we have two items per row. You could absolutely create another media query here to place this one in the middle, but I actually like this layout, so I'm gonna keep it this way. And then if we keep shrinking down, you can see how everything just stacks nicely into one single column in here because we're using that breakpoint and nothing else is getting modified except desktop. And that's it. That's everything that you need to do to be able to have your bottom slides aligned to the middle of the top ones when you're using an auto layout set to list and you have an uneven number of slides. If you found this trick helpful, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on the last day of this series, and I will see you tomorrow.